So today has just been a, a really wonderful day, one of those days that you get in photography and in nature that just just blows your mind and, and exceeds all your expectations. So I'm, um, I'm in Iceland, I'm in the Highlands with a workshop at a waterfall called Hyfoss. Now, this is a location that I've been to many times before, I've shot many times before, and we always shoot it from, from the top of the canyon looking down into the canyon. Uh, now, I strongly advocate that you should always get to know locations and give yourself as much time as possible to walk around and explore a location just to make sure that you see it from all the different angles and that you don't go home feeling that you've missed something. But uh, I've been very guilty of not doing that here, I, I'm, I'm realizing today. Because before this, uh, before this workshop, I had a look at some hiking apps, uh, Topo Maps, which is an app that I use, and uh, Peak Visor and, and Google Earth and realized that there was a, a pathway that led away from, away from the waterfall, down the canyon, and then looped around back up the river to bring us here to the bottom of the waterfall. So we get two perspectives, shoot it from the top as well as from the bottom. Now it takes about 35 minutes to walk down here. It's relatively easy. It's a little bit slippy in places. So it's great if you've got hiking poles, but just walking along the bottom of the valley, you get a, a completely different perspective of this waterfall and it seems to have so much power when you're standing at the bottom of it looking up than it does when you're looking at it falling down into the canyon the height of it here feels so much greater and i think that's something about perspective of high places when you're standing at the bottom and you, you feel them looming over you it really does give the place a power and a grandeur and a scale that you can't necessarily get when you're when you're looking down into it and also the the rocks completely have a feel like they have a different form here so it feels like the the waterfall is rolling out of this, uh, this gap between this huge wall of rock and it's really quite impressive. So I came down here with the group and none of us had been here before and it, it's super exciting to encounter a new place and, and work out how you're going to photograph it and what your, what your process is going to be and what the different angles are, what lens you're going to use, how it's going to work. So we've been playing around with, with different things. Uh, my, my first instinct as it usually is with, when confronted with a scene like this is to shoot it with a wide angle. So we tried that, we, uh, we tried putting someone in front of it to get scale, and then that's actually quite challenging. You can't do anything with long exposures because you're getting so much spray onto the camera. So then what we've been doing is walking back and using a telephoto lens, and just zooming in onto different parts of the, of, the, of the water as it falls, and just framing, framing the water with a really fast shutter speed. Now, because the light levels are quite low, Getting a fast shutter speed, something like one over 500 to, to really freeze the water. You have to pump up the ISO, open the aperture to its maximum, which you can do because depth of field really isn't a problem here. You're shooting a, a blank wall. Uh, and then just looking around, you get the camera off the tripod. It's much easier without the, without the tripod. You don't need to worry about shake because you're shooting at a fast shutter speed. And getting the camera off the tripod gives you that freedom to just move around, looking at the water, looking for shapes, looking for forms in the water and then just firing off a couple of fast shots it's it's a very different way of shooting it's not like the slow methodical way of shooting that i often find that i'm doing in the mountains or when i'm creating long exposures but it's incredibly satisfying when you when you look at the back of the screen and you see these almost abstract images of this frozen water giving you these shapes and because the rock is very black and the water is obviously really white the tumbling water you get these monochrome images. Everything is either black or white, which is going to look really good when we post-process it. We'll really be able to make the white pop, create a really high contrast image. Uh, and I think it's going to work nice as a collection with the, of these different, uh, these different telephoto abstracts that, that we're shooting. But it still works well as a wide angle. I'm quite happy with the wide angle shots. It's just very tricky with the spray that's falling. You have to be constantly cleaning the front element of the lens and that makes for a bit of a challenge when you're as close to the waterfall as we are. We're just about 50 meters away now. So I think what we're going to do before we go back is maybe walk downstream a little bit, see if we can do some long exposures. And then because it's getting dark, we'll walk up back up to the, to the top of the canyon uh, and maybe shoot some, some shots there at the end of the day. Uh, just so we've done the whole range, we've got, we've got the whole aspect of this waterfall captured from, from different angles. And that's a, it's a really satisfying feeling. It really feels nice to have discovered a new place, to be doing the kinds of shots that I've never done before. And uh, I'm just super excited. It's just, this is what nature gives you. This is what photography gives you, is this, this buzz of exploration, of, of seeing things, of working out ways to capture them, and of, of being overwhelmed 
by the by the by the beauty of it and by the awe of it and the great thing about doing workshops is you get to share that with people you see that on the faces of other people we're all kind of standing here going wow this is you know a, a really special thing so it's it's just been a really really cool day uh, so we, yeah we'll get back up to the top of the canyon do some more shots there and then maybe head home for uh, for dinner So I'm finally back home and ready to edit some of the images. So let's have a look at how I would go about doing that. So here we are in Lightroom and what I find most important when it comes to processing images for me is that I need to have a clear idea of the direction that I want to take the processing before I actually start because just diving in and playing around with the, playing around with the sliders is always going to lead to a, to a bad result. So I need to have an idea of, of what I actually want to do with the image before I start. And that for me is really dependent on the mood of the image and the elements that the image uh, actually feature, which in turn is dependent on the, uh, on the way that, on the mood of the image when I actually captured it on what, what the, what was going on at the scene, what the feelings were like at the scene and, and the way the image was there. And usually when I'm capturing an image, when I'm shooting, I tend to try to have an idea of, of what the final processed image is going to look like. Uh, so there is a direct link between how you're shooting in the field and, and the mood that you have there and what you're going to be doing when you sit down and process the image. Now, when I was shooting this particular scene, it was at the bottom of the waterfall and I used a telephoto uh, lens just to cut off the top of the waterfall, just to focus on the bottom, because I really wanted to make this frame about the power of the water, about the water falling down, compressing the small figure against the bottom of the waterfall. So you got an idea of the strength of the water uh, and using a fast shutter speed just to really freeze the water in place and just really give an idea of this massive volume of water falling down and that kind of interacting with the small figure in the front. And because this wasn't a really well-lit scene, we were in shadow, it was quite late towards the end of the day, then it isn't going to be a colorful image. I'm not going to be introducing, playing around and enhancing natural light or anything like this. Just going to be looking at working on the contrast between the water and the rock and trying to get as much detail as I can in the water, really make that water pop, really give it a lot of dynamism, really try to bring out the shape and the volume of the water. So the first thing that I want to do is play around with the white balance, just make it a little bit cooler because I like, I like the idea of the water. I want the blues to be, I want the whites to be quite blue. I don't want there to be any yellow in there, certainly no magenta. So I'm going to push the magenta down a little bit as well. Now, what I'm going to find as I edit the image is that these, uh, the color values will change a little bit as well. When you start to brighten parts and darken parts, then, then colors do start to shift. But this is just to get the whites to a place where I want them at the beginning. I want them just to be a little bit cooler. I don't want to have any hint of, of warmth in, in the water. Uh, and I also need to increase the exposure because the image is underexposed. You can see on the histogram there. That was basically because I really wanted to have a fast shutter speed. And by and because I was shooting handheld, using a fast shutter speed to freeze the water basically meant underexposing the image unless I really wanted to push up the ISO much further than I was comfortable doing. So I'm just going to increase the exposure there and dial in some contrast right from the beginning. Now, normally I don't use global contrast. I tend to just work with the sliders below or work with a with filters but because this is a very simple image just with a few elements then I don't think there's any harm in just pushing out the contrast a little bit globally because there wasn't really much there the scene was very low contrast and that's something I'm going to have to work with and then I'm going to just start working with the with the different tonal values here now you can see there's a huge amount on the on the right side of the of the histogram so the image is quite underexposed so I can push up the the highlights a little bit somewhere like that make the whites brighter same with the whites there push them up a similar amount something like that uh, and then to contrast that just go to the blacks and push those down about a similar amount to somewhere like that so already you can see that the water is starting to pop a little bit i'm going to go down here and enhance that with a tone curve again this is just a way of adding contrast globally We've got the highlights on the right side, the shadows on the left, pushing up brightens, pushing down darkens. So what I'm gonna do 
just put a little bit of, a, of an S curve here. I'm gonna push the, the highlights up on this side, bring the mid-tones down, and then just darken the shadows just a little bit to really make that contrast pop. And you can see already, just by increasing contrast, the, the figure is starting to look more saturated there. So just something like that. Now, because these blacks are going to a dark black, digital black, I'm just gonna lift the black point up just a tiny little bit there to put a little bit more texture in the blacks. Now, if you go too far, then, then it starts to look washed out. But just a little bit here starts to give the blacks a more filmic look. But they're still too dark. I don't want to have the blacks as a solid chunk of, of black with no detail. I want to be able to see the detail there. So I'm going to go back up to the shadows, push those out so I can see the detail in the cliffs at the back but they're still black, they're still dark, and I'm still maintaining that feeling of, of contrast. Now, generally I'm kind of happy here with the overall balance between the darks and the lights with the, with the tonal values, but I'm not happy with the foreground here with these kind of gray rocks, which don't really fit in with the rest of the scene. This catches your eye a little bit, and I really want the eye just to be about the water and the figure. So what I'm gonna do is just make that catch your eye less. I'm gonna make it less visual, uh, so I'm just gonna just drop a, a filter on there, a gradient filter, something like that, reset it, reset all the values, and then just drop down the exposure to darken it a little bit and push up the clarity just so we can still, we're still aware that there's some detail there, but not so much that it's going to uh, gonna trip our eyes up. So you can see already that kind of makes the whole, makes the foreground more coherent with the overall feel of the image. Let's just bring that up a little bit and click done. Now I want to work with a radial filter. I want to do some more work on the water. Again, double click to uh, reset all the settings. I use radial filters a lot when I want to work with local areas of an image, just work on, on, a on contrast on a specific part. So I'm just gonna spread the filter out just to cover the water. And again, what I'm trying to do here is really add a lot more depth, a lot more pop to the, uh, to the water. So I'm just gonna go straight in and add some, some contrast there. Something like that. And I'm gonna push out the whites and pull down the blacks because by doing that, it's gonna make these areas here, it's gonna give them more depth, make, give, make it feel a little bit more 3D. So we'll just push out the whites some more and push down the blacks about the same amount, something like that. And then I'll just go down here to the, just change out a little bit just to make sure everything's being caught in there. I'm just gonna go down to the clarity and the texture. Now these are basically contrast as well. Clarity and texture, what they do is they just increase the bright pixels get brighter, the dark pixels get darker using different algorithms, uh, but it still basically works with contrast. It just gives the idea of more detail. So we'll, we'll just push the texture up a little bit and we'll push the clarity up quite a bit more, something like that. And if we turn that on and off, you can see that started to give a lot more depth, make that water look a little bit more solid. Maybe just pull that back just, just a little bit something like that. Yeah, but it's, it starts to give the idea that the water feels really, really three-dimensional there. Now, I'm gonna have a look at the colors now. So we'll go down to the, the hue, saturation, and luminosity slider. Now, I always play with colors later because as soon as you start messing around with contrast, darkening parts of the image, brightening parts of the image, then that's gonna change the, the saturation of the colors. Already the figure here is saturated a little bit more because just by playing with the, with the shadows uh, and pushing the contrast more. So what I wanna do though is really make those colors pop a little bit now because he's wearing red. The first thing we're gonna do is just push out the red a little bit. You can see that's getting brightened because there's probably some orange in the jacket as well. Just push those out a little bit and maybe the, the blues on the backpack, so I can just select that, push out the blues, uh, maybe a little bit more all the way up there, just really make that blue on his backpack pop a little bit. Uh, and then again, I think we'll, we'll play around with the saturation. We can really saturate that red. Actually, no, we don't want to do it too much because it starts to look 
a little bit fake because there isn't any dark light there and again push out the the, uh, the saturation of the blue on that backpack and yeah now that figure is really starting to to pop out a little bit more and it's pretty much done now the image I think the last thing that I really want to do is just come and look at the, at the color grading at the split toning just work put a little bit of blue a little bit more blue in the shadows and uh, same with the highlights, just a tiny, tiny bit of blue in the shadows and highlights there. Let's just turn that on and off. Yeah, that's just to keep the blues looking as, as kind of clean and keep the white, sorry, looking as clean and, and crisp as possible. And I think that's pretty much it. That's really all I want to do. If we click here, we can kind of see the before and the after. And you can see it's just, it's quite muddy here. You could really feel how dark the scene was. And it's really just pushed out the whites, given this image, given this water a lot more depth, really brought out the power of the falling water, made the figure stand out a little bit because the image is really about the relationship between the figure and the, and, and the power of the water there. Kept the blacks and the, kept the color tones and the blacks, moved it away from being warm, giving it a little bit of coolness and just giving it a lot more contrast and really tried to bring out the power in the water. And so yeah, that's it really, a relatively quick edit, just really trying to capture the mood and the essence of the scene, which is what editing an image should be all about really, not trying to change the image, not trying to make it look like something that it wasn't or introduce elements that weren't there, but to really capture the mood and the essence of the image as it was. So I think that's it for this video. I hope it's been useful and I hope it's been interesting. If you've got any questions to ask me about the shooting process or about the editing process, drop me a comment below or, or, or drop me an email and I'll get back in touch with you. And as ever, thanks for watching. Good luck with your shooting. And until the next time, take care.